Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off discussing the release date for AMD's Raphael, aka AM5 and the Ryzen 7000 series processors, because there is a rumor which is swirling around indicating that these processors may actually launch a little earlier than initially anticipated, which also brings up a very interesting question as to whether gamers should just skip over the Ryzen 5800X 3D. I'm sure most of you know about this already, but it is basically the 5800 based on the same Zen 3 architecture, albeit with an additional 64 megabytes of vCache. And the performance uplift for this thing is pretty impressive. For games anyway, we're looking at just over 15% improvement in frame rates. And that honestly is pretty impressive. It's at, honestly more of a generational leap in performance, but it's quite telling that AMD are releasing this and then Zen 4 afterwards. It shows that they are pretty confident in the performance targets of Zen 4. And I do believe that Zen 4 is going to be very impressive. Actually, I think it's going to really blow the socks off a lot of people, but we'll get more into that in just a moment. So let's talk about the release date, shall we? So for a long time, Zen 4 has been penciled in for Q4 this year. In fact, I've mentioned it several times before, and honestly, it's just been a rumor that has been circulating for quite some time. However, Grayman on Twitter, who has previously leaked roadmaps for AMD, is now stating that we may actually see these processors launch in Q3, which again is much earlier than what we'd initially heard. Now I'm going to do some digging to find out why this release date has changed so much. It's possibly because AMD want to put as much pressure on Intel as possible. In fact, we've got some Intel benchmarks we're going to go into in just a moment. But it also, again, leads to the question, should you pick up the 5800X 3D? Now, there are some benefits to doing that. Obviously, the fact that you can still run it on an AM4 motherboard means that the cost for entry for those of us who have, let's say, a 500 series board is going to be significantly less. And to be honest with you, if you already have like a decent GPU, even if you have something along the lines of an RTX 3090 or a 6800 um, XT or something like that, at higher resolutions, most likely upgrading your CPU isn't going to be a huge deal anyway. So there is also that to take into consideration. But if you've got a processor that you're relatively happy with now, honestly, I would probably wait for uh, Ryzen 7000 slash well, basically Zen 4, because it's going to be a massive improvement over the current uh, current iterations of um, CPUs that AMD have available. I'm actually hearing that it could be up to 40% faster, although I do believe that that is inclusive of clock frequency games. Now, don't forget that AMD at CES this year have already demonstrated Raphael running. It was actually shown off uh, running Halo Infinite, and in that demo, it was actually hitting 5 gigahertz across all cores. And you have to remember that that is not final production silicon by any stretch of the imagination. And I do believe that the clock frequency of these processes is going to be much higher than that. But in terms of core counts, to my understanding, the core counts of Zen 4 is going to remain consistent to what we already have. So the highest end SKU, which I'm assuming is going to be the 7950, it's still going to be 16 cores, 32 threads. And that honestly is more than sufficient, um, I believe, for now. Um, I, I think that AMD will be increasing the core counts in the future. But for now, anyway, AMD believes that that's honestly okay. And, you know, I, I've mentioned this in a previous video, a recent exclusive. But I have heard that they do have... Um, higher core count silicon that they have been testing for Zen 4, but they are not planning to release it. I heard uh, 24 cores has been tested internally. I've also heard from one person they even tested 32 cores, but I'm not so certain about that. But 24 cores I have heard has been tested, but I don't believe it's going to be launched. I believe that they're still going to retain the same core counts and basically we'll see like 16 cores, 12 cores, 8 cores, and so on and so on. And given the fact that it's going to be on an AM5 platform, it's going to be very interesting to see 
what the um, strategy is going forward in terms of pricing and a lot more, particularly given Intel are now being competitive. And this brings me to the next piece of news, which is a leaked benchmark of what is most assuredly a i9-13900K from Intel. As the name would imply, this is the successor to the 12900K. It's the 13th generation of processors from Intel, and it is based on Raptor Lake. Now, to my understanding, Raptor Lake isn't a huge hop, skip, and jump away from older Lake. It's basically a refinement of the architecture. I'm hearing that performance gains are probably high single digits to low double digits. So let's say somewhere around 8 to 12%. Although, of course, as with anything with performance, it is dependent upon a plethora of things, not least of which is the applications which are being used, the core count, and all of that stuff. You know, how many, how well the threads are utilized by the application, for example. Particularly given that... Um, with both Alder Lake and Raptor Lake, they have not only the high performance cores, but also the energy efficient cores as well. Either way, Ashes of the Singularity now has an entry in its database for this processor. And it's kind of interesting because, well, as you can probably expect, it's just not recognizing the CPU. But you can actually see here both the physical and logical cores are being registered as 32. Now, if you compare that to a 12900K, obviously we have more cores um, because uh, Raptor Lake does increase the core count. And we also have performance numbers as well. Now, I will say that they are running this with an RTX 3090, and this is on the lower presets along with a uh, resolution of just 1080p so it's not exactly stressing the gpu at this resolution it's only utilizing direct x11 unfortunately as well so it doesn't push the threads across the cpus quite so efficiently uh, actually the singularity uh, escalation was actually one of the first benchmarks which really started to leverage higher core count processors it was actually really cool back in the day to really uh, kind of witness how this pro how this uh, application or how this game rather was kind of really showing off the benefits of lower level APIs. I remember when DirectX 12 was, you know, kind of doing the rounds. But anyway, getting back to the point of the news, I suspect that, that uh, Raptor Lake is going to be a fairly decent release from Intel. I suspect it's going to be decently competitive against um, Zen 4, but I do think Zen 4 is still going to be, at least in terms of the pinnacle of performance, it's probably still going to win out. Um, I don't think Intel are going to pip AMD to the post. It's going to really depend on a lot of stuff, not least of which what final clock frequencies both can attain out of their respective architectures. Um, the good news is, though, I do suspect Intel are going to be decently competitive. And I'm going to be really interested to do some benchmarks when these processors launch, particularly for Zen 4. And, you know, for gamers, I think that an 8-core Zen 4 is going to be absolutely more than enough to see you in through the next several years, to be totally honest with you. Um, it'll also be really... I think it'll be really cool um, to see what the next generation of APUs from AMD are actually capable of as well. Um, APUs are becoming increasingly more powerful, as a lot of you guys know. And I think that eventually... We're going to see lower, you know, performance GPUs pretty much go by the wayside as AMD and Intel try to push their uh, iGPUs, essentially. And another thing, too, is that APUs going forward from AMD are going to have some major fundamental improvements, including uh, major changes in how they deal with memory space. Obviously, with an APU, it basically utilizes system memory, so that would be DDR4 or DDR5 depending on the platform and i'm hearing and i've mentioned about this in a previous video I try to remember to link it in the description that uh, basically they're going to be addressing essentially the same memory space this is going to be much more console like and we should see a decent uh, improvement in performance there but there's also going to be a number of other uh kind of major iterations, I guess is the best way of describing it, for AMD APUs going forward, including unification of memory spaces, I'm um, sorry, uh, 
uh, cache memory spaces, excuse me, and a lot more besides. So it'll be really interesting to see. Either way, though, I hope you have enjoyed this shorter video. Apologies for it being uh, non-camera today, but I'm finishing some tests for a couple of cool projects. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know about this one because honestly, I'm kind of interested to see what the release date for Zen, 3, uh, Zen 4 actually ends up being because, you know, with this uh, 5800X3D launch as well, it's actually seeming to be a little similar for both AMD's approach for GPUs and CPUs, because if you remember, we've got this kind of refresh for RDNA 2 incoming, which is still based on the 7 nm process, albeit slightly increased clock frequencies and all that jazz, but it's not like there's a fundamental shift in the architecture. It's essentially the same thing with some, uh, you know, improvements in silicon, basically, just to kind of crank the frequencies up a little more. And I presume it also have higher memory clocks as well. That's what I'm hearing anyway. But then it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, here's our DNA free, you know, just relatively shortly after. So, yeah, I mean... It's kind of it's kind of a weird one because with all of the shortages that have hit, I suspect a lot of people are just going to be like, mm, you know what, I'm going to wait now. Um, like if it gets to like April and you've not managed to pick up a GPU, personally, I would maybe even suggest you're like, nope, you know what, I'm just going to wait and then pick up RTX 40 or um. Or RDNA 3, which I guess will be the RX 7000 series. That's what I'm hearing anyway. It's going to be RX 7000 series with Narve 31 being the 7900. And then Narve 32 being the 7800. And then 33, I think, is like the 7600. But anyway, with that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.